Right, you guys, got another video here for you where your NAS drives are not showing up inside Windows, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. Now, this is Windows 11, but this can happen on any version of Windows. Now, I've done a Windows update, and I've also done a update on my NAS, and then all of a sudden, uh, it's now disappeared, and I can't connect to it. Now, when I go into the network area here, let me show you what's happening. I am able to connect to this area here, which has my files. And sometimes you can't even get in access to this. You get an error code coming up. But in this case, I'm allowed to access this area here and I can literally upload stuff to it, but I can't connect to it. I can't connect to the control panel. And this is where the problem lies. You can see here, I don't have any access to the control panel of my Synology. Uh, NAS. Now yours can be any type of NAS. It will be the same problems. All NASs are prone to this sort of thing. And when I refresh the page here, you can see my NAS doesn't show up here for the control panel to log into it so I can get access to all the uh, utilities and packages and stuff inside the NAS. So this needs to be fixed. Now sometimes you won't get access to the folders. You'll get an error code popping up here, but in this case, it's the other way around. Let me show you what I can do to try to resolve uh, this problem. There's quite a few things that we need to check to make sure Windows hasn't um, reset these or changed these for us. So first off, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the Start button and we're going to go to Settings. Inside the Settings pane here, the first place I'm going to check here is the Network and Internet. Inside here, I'm going to go down to the Ethernet here because I'm on uh, an Ethernet connection. Make sure that I'm set to the right setting here for the network profile type, which is private here. Your device is discoverable on the network. That's important that we got that in the right place. So I'm going to go back here. And then once we've got this done, I'm going to check proxy. Make sure there is no proxy set on here. Um, I haven't set a proxy up, but just in case you may have set a proxy up and it might be having difficulty. Make sure your VPN is not connected as well. Sometimes this can cause issues. And also make sure that you've got automatically detect settings is on. And this means you should connect. Next up, we're going to go to the next area to check, which is typing in the search box here. We're going to type in here control panel and we're going to go to the control panel. Inside the control panel under the category uh, setting here, we're going to go to network and internet. Click on the network and internet and you can see here network and sharing center. Click on this one and this will take us to this page here. From here, we're gonna to go to where it says Ethernet connection up here. I'm gonna click on this and the Ethernet status will pop up. From here, I'm gonna to go to the Properties tab. Click on the Properties tab and look for Internet Protocol version four. This is TCP IP version four. Once we click on this and highlight it, we can uh, go to Properties. So go Properties, once you click on this, so let me show you here, click on this and then go to the actual properties tab here, just down on the bottom right hand side. So click on this and make sure that you've got obtain an IP address automatically and make sure the obtain DNS server address automatically has got the radio button in as well. So we know those settings are fine. So we can now move on to the next step to make sure everything is working OK uh, just before we start trying some other things. So change advanced sharing settings. Click on this on the top left hand side here because this is going to allow us to make sure that all our settings are okay. Now normally when Windows does some sort of feature update or something like that, this can get reset and this can stop you getting access. We're running under the privacy setting here. So I'm going to go private and turn on network and discovery and put the check mark in, turn on automatic setup of network uh, here, so I'll make sure these are check marked here. Also, file and sharing for printers is turned on, and also you can go to the all networks here. And I've got the password area is on, but if you want to turn that off, you can do by going down here. The guests and also the uh, public shouldn't be an issue because we're using the privacy setting here, but you can change the others if you need to change them, and you can turn off the passwords if that is still causing a problem. Next, we're going to head over to the Download Center on Synology. If you're running another NAS, then you need to download their tool to assist you to find the NAS on your local network. Pretty much most of these 
uh, NASs have their own software. So download which one you need and use that software. I can already tell you that I've updated the operating system for our NAS to DSM 7.0 and this problem uh, did arise after I did this update so maybe there it needed to do a reset. I have turned off the NAS and restarted it but it's still invisible and I can't see it. So click on the download section and we're going to hit the Windows download. If you're on a Mac or Ubuntu or one of these other operating systems you can download and use this uh, for yourself. So now we've got the program downloaded we're going to click on the executable and get this installed on the system. So what does Synology Assistant do? It's going to allow us to detect our NAS on the network and this is going to make things a lot more easier to you to get logged into your NAS. So this is an essential bit of kit. So run Synology Assistant here and get it installed. It's going to scan your local network and you can see it's found my office NAS here set up. It's given me now the IP address so I can try to log on this way and you can see it's set to DHCP. It says the status is ready, so I know it's working okay. I can right click on the IP and click connect, and it will now give me this page, and I can now put in my uh, details to log into my NAS. So maybe it logged me out for some reason, and then it went invisible. I really don't know what happened, but this sort of stuff is pretty common, and this does uh, sort of make people pull their hair out uh, because they're having major issues trying to find it or locate or connect to their NAS. So now I've logged in, I've got access to the control panel. And this is important because obviously uh, you want to be able to check some settings inside here. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification to be notified when we upload new videos, just in case you haven't done that already. But we're gonna go and click on control panel here. And from the control panel, we're gonna make sure that we go to the file services here. Inside the file services, you want to check the SMB. Make sure SMB is enabled, the service is running. Also, make sure uh, down the bottom here, it says enable Windows Network Discovery to allow file access and via SMB. Make sure this is checkmarked. If this is not checkmarked, it's not going to detect and find it on the network and you're going to have issues. So I'm going to remove this tick and then put it back in and apply it. So apply it when it's removed and apply it when you put the tick in and hopefully this will then discover my NAS and make it more visible on the network. We can use this uh, link here to uh, connect to our NAS so we can see whether we still are getting connected. So from here, we can then paste this in and we can then connect to it. Now, I know this part works, but I want to make sure that we are getting uh, the control panel discovered on the local network. So I'm going to go back to control panel here and I'm going to go to uh, the area where it says network and internet. Can I click on this one? And then from here, we're going to go over to where it says view network computers and devices. So click on this one here and we should see whether it populates. And there we are. We have now access to our office NAS. It's now been detected. So in my case, I removed the check mark from the discovery part, clicked apply, and then put the check mark back in and then clicked apply again and it's now found my NAS on the network. Now, if yours doesn't have a check mark in it, you can put the check mark in, click apply, and you should then have access to your control panel, and you should have access to your NAS. If you followed all these steps, you should see your NAS on the local network and be able to connect to it. Now, also, you might want to go to features here. If you're running an old type, type of NAS, this is another thing that you can do. Uh, but I don't advise people to do this because Microsoft have disabled this by default now, uh, which is the SMB here. You can see here SMB 1.0, uh, SIFS file sharing support. If you go into here, uh, you'll be able to put a check mark in this if you're running older NASes. You don't really need this on a modern day NAS. It should do it automatically like I've showed you. But if you've got an old NAS and you need to have this enabled, then you can go in here and check mark all the way down to where it says client automatic removal and also file sharing support. Put those check marks in and click apply and then basically restart your PC and then restart your NAS and hopefully your NAS will be detected. Now you only need to enable this feature if you're still having issues with your NAS being discovered. Uh, if your NAS has now been discovered, you wouldn't need to enable this feature. You can leave this disabled and uh, you should be okay but maybe you're running a really old NAS and it needs to have this on for some reason, then you can go ahead and enable this feature. 
other than that leave it off by default so that is going to be about it for this video hopefully this video has been some sort of use to you this is the sort of troubleshooting technique to get discovery of your nas on your local network my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you have a lovely weekend just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members who have joined my youtube members group i appreciate the support and i shall see you on the discord server for a chat have a nice day bye for now Thank <laughs> you.